Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about making lithophanes from digital photos. So I'm going to make a plastic little picture um, from a normal everyday digital photo you take on your phone and then you can display it on your counters and stuff. So um, I'm going to go through exactly how to do it and the best settings that I find to use for it. So stay with us and let's go. Okay guys, let's just get straight into it and go through how, to, how we start off. We start off with a photo, so let's go and get into that. Okay, so once you've got the photo that you want to make into a lithophane, try and keep it a reasonably high quality because the, the better quality you've got the photo, the better the lithophane's gonna turn out. But so once you've found it, right click on it in Windows anyway, go open with and go down to photos. So that's the default photo editing program that comes with Windows. For you guys with Apple Macs, you'll have a, a editing photo on your Mac. So just open that up and go into the edit photo or edit image icon, which is on this program, it's just up the top here. So once you go into that, it should open up with some sort of adjustments you can make. Okay, so in the crop area you've got, you can resize your photo here. We don't want to, well, I don't want to do that. So, but you can resize and, and just, you know, try to isolate the subject as much as possible um, this one here this photo is one I took on the barrier reef when I used to work as a photographer on the barrier reef took this little turtle used to join us every day he was pretty cool it's one of the cool things about diving anyway um, under filter don't be tempted to go and do black and white so this is very similar to the sort of stuff you get in Instagram for those people that use Instagram black and white it tends to wash out the, the, the grays a bit and sort of whiten them up too much and it whitens up the background. We don't want to do that. We want to make the biggest contrast with the photo. Still looking good between our subject and our background. So we'll go back to the original. We will not use that. We'll go into adjustments instead and go down to the saturation and just pull the saturation out of the photo. So it's just pulling the color out, but leaving all the detail in there. Well, the other one sort of made the background lighter, made the turtle lighter. This does nothing to it except take the color away. Okay, you can see there's better detail in that turtle. Now what you want to do now is get the contrast and try and contrast it just a little bit so it's a bit more contrasty. The, the more contrast you can make it without it being ridiculous, like that's ridiculous. Okay, so the more contrast you can do with it still looking like a nice photo, the better the lithophane is going to be. What you want to do is separate the subject from the background. So if you've got a person here, you want to do the same thing. You want to have try and have a clear background behind them whether it be a sky or a, a wall or something, not cluttered with bushes or trees and all that sort of stuff. Try and get it where they're not sort of fighting the subject for some space on your screen. So you want the subject isolated. It turns out better that way. So once you've done that, so all I've done is contrast up a bit, desaturate the whole thing, and then I'm gonna save a copy. And I wanna rename it so I don't overwrite what I just did, or the, the original photo I should say, and I wanna make it I just make a BW so it's a black and white thing. Pick whichever folder you want to put it in. I'm just going to chuck it on the desktop and save. So that's all you need to do in the graphic editing side of things. Okay, so once you've done that, you need to go into your web browser and open up this site, 3dp.rocks forward slash forward slash lithophane. I will link this in the description down below for those that want to go and have a look. This I found is the easiest and most reliable one to use. Um, what you do in here is you pick images and from the images you go and grab the photo you've got on here So I've just got off the desktop and I've just pulled it here and I'm going to drop it there And it will create our little lithophane. You can see it's curved So I've picked the outer curve here. You can pick an inner curve one. You can pick a flat one You can do a cylinder so you can plump a light in the middle and it will light up all around it um, A pillow, some domes and a love heart there Okay, I found the one that works the best is this outer curve one. So outer curve is what you're going to do. And you can see the turtle there. Now we've got to make a few changes up in the settings here. So if we pick settings and we go to model settings first. Now this size, maximum size here is how wide you want your picture. Okay, so at the moment it's at 100 mil. I'm going to take it up to about 220. That's around about the average size of a bed, especially the end of 
the series so you got i think it's about 225 235 something like that you can go diagonal with your photos remember that so you might have to measure to see what you want your photo you can resize it once you've got it in your program if you do stuff up okay so to get that to roughly how big you want it the thickness three i found is the best if you go too thin you won't have enough there to do the dark and light areas because it's the thickness of the material that gets laid down that determines how the photo comes out so i found three mil is about right if you make it too thick the light won't be able to penetrate through the plastic and it's not going to come out any good so i found three works good you've got um the size of the lithothane there the border if you want to put a border around the whole photo you can do that here i tend to leave everything as default down there the other thing you need to do is go into image settings now you need to make sure this is a positive image not a negative it's got to be positive okay and that's the only thing i change on this slide i don't do anything else here and that's pretty much it so we've done all we've changed is those top two the model and the image setting if you wanted to download you can go on your download thing and tell it where to download and all that sort of stuff but leave i leave everything as a default i then go back to model and i go download here so i push the download button and it will then the download just like a normal download is with anything else that you do once the download's finished which it's showing here it's finished it's not got a little ring around it going around i click on the download come over to where it is i right click on that on the picture and i go show in folder and it will show my little picture in the folder here now from that i'm going to drag that and dump that on the desktop you can leave it where it is if you, if you like navigating through but I, I like to just have everything sitting on the desktop it's easier for me and then i put everything away when i've finished okay now what you want to do is open up cura then from cura you want to pull in your stl you just drag to the desktop and dump it in cura now you can see it it hasn't taken up all the bed plate i'm not sure why that didn't work but anyway it doesn't matter because what i can do is i can come into this second tab here and basically i'm changing the size of it so in any other browser you look for this resizing option and i'm going to like oh no let's see 400 times is that going to make it too big oh way too big see now i'll make it 200 and look at that that fits in and if i want to curve it i'll just you know just move it around if i need to move it around i'll come down to this icon i can look at it at the top and i can see i've got heaps of room there if i wanted to go crossways i could probably go another another hundred if i really wanted to one other thing do not get tempted to lay this flat you need to print it standing up okay so if, if you do any of the flat ones stand it up do not do not print them laying flat they don't quite print as well okay now over in your settings your wall count or needs to be at least 15. so you've got enough room for the plastic to where that needs light to go through it makes the plastic really thin where that doesn't need light to go through it makes it fairly thick so you can imagine it needs some room to to maneuver to make the thing you can make that 15 and then i make the infill 10 or you can make this two and make the infill 100. it doesn't really matter it does the same sort of thing i find this uses the less filament if i make more walls and less infill it doesn't completely chocker it up it doesn't need to it just needs to have the walls to do it if you do 100 percent infill you're just using filament you don't need to use okay but it's up to you though if you don't if you do a low wall count you have to do a high infill if you do a high wall count you have to do you can get away with a low infill from that you just slice and it will slice away and it will get, when it's done it's all ready to send to your printer okay so that's pretty much all you need to do sorry one thing i forgot your how fine you make it i usually put it anywhere from 1.2 to 1.6 okay so you don't need to to worry about um going to 0.2 the better the finer you get it here and of course the nicer the photo and the less layer lines and stuff you get now saying that i've seen a lot of instructional videos that i've watched say you need to slow it down you need to slow it down to get a good really good photo i printed these on my k1 max and my p1p my bamboo p1 pre and my creality k1 max at full speed and they're coming out better than slow speed of the older type printers where you used to have to slow it down the new printers are doing a phenomenal job so i will just get out of this okay guys also um i forgot to say that you don't need supports don't put supports on at all you have supports all over your photo and it'll be hard to get off and they'll leave little bits everywhere no supports okay you also need to have either a brim or a raft i tend to go for the brim to save the filament 
um, but either one will do. You need it to, to, to be able to, to give it a bit more support so it won't fall over when it's printing. Okay, guys, so here's the finished product that's just been printed off on my K1 Max. So as you can sort of see the photo there, but what really brings it into life is when you put a light behind it. Just let the camera adjust to it for a tick. Okay, there you go. That's it. So that's the way the photo comes out. You can see how it's isolated from the background there. Okay, so that's that one. I did another one on a bed slinger, so it was on my Anycubic Viper. Exactly the same settings, just wasn't done as fast. Okay, so there's this one. And once again, we got to get it so the camera adjusts. Okay, have a look at the divers um, around the diver's chest. You can see lines there. You know, that, that's how it sort of, it's still good, but it, that's what the printers do. Okay, the new ones sort of get rid of that entirely. Okay, one other thing, this took twice as long as the other ones to print. Um, so the new printers are something, are something, yeah. Here's another one I did. This was a, a lizard I took in Bali. Okay, and some more that I printed on my, this one was done on the P1P. You can see how good they come out here yeah? okay so the way I display them is I printed this out of printables link in the description down below um, it prints out like this the lithophanes just sit on it like so what I do is I bought these when I was in Vietnam I go from <laughs> back street they had electronic store selling all this sort of stuff they were everywhere over there. So basically, you peel one off, you cut the little wire there if you only want one, and it produces this little four, four light thing here. Any LED light will do, but anyway, this is a 12 volt one, so it will run off a 9 volt battery, just not at full strength, so it means it'll last longer on the battery. Um, if you've got 12 volts, you can pump it in here and it will be nice and bright. But anyway, I stick that on the on the front there, and then the lithophane sits. I'll get one of the small ones. So the lithophane fits here and leans up against that and the light sits directly behind it and then I run the leads to the back and I printed this out which I stick a 9 volt battery on and I glue it to the back there or, or double side tape it to the back there so the light just goes around and pumps on the 9 volt battery so, you know one of those little rectangular type batteries so and the lithophane goes on the front there like that and when you turn the battery on, it, there you go, so it comes out like that. It just sits in there like that, so the light's at the back there like that. And it just sits on the, oops, it just sits on there like that. So it displays the picture really well. I'll put the links to all these models and stuff in the description down below. Um, I hope you got some benefit out of today's one, Guy. Um, if you um, have any suggestions of anything you'd like me to talk about please leave them in the comments down below I read every single comment and respond to every single comment that people leave me um, I really appreciate the people that take the time to um, comment on my my videos if you like the video at all had got some use out of it please give us a like if you feel like you might want to subscribe to see what's coming up next I'd really appreciate that too um, I will be pulling out something every week so I'll have something next week so until then have a good week, guys. See you later. Bye. I got some of my photos, and I printed these on my three. Okay, so to edit a photo, to edit, change a photo. They're called lithophanes. I've got a how-to video coming.